Hello and welcome to another episode of Diecast Restos. I'm Jason and this is the Matchbox 53A Aston Martin, produced by Lesney between 1958 and 1963. Based on the Aston Martin DB24, it is rumoured that its inclusion in the range is down to the fact that Lesney designer Jack O'Dell himself owned a DB24. This one is in poor condition, suffering blistered paintwork on the body and base, as well as corrosion of the right hand front wing. Early issues were painted in silver, lacking silver trim, but they did have paint applied to the tail lights. It was then changed up to metallic green with silver trim now applied, and following that the colour changed to metallic red, the same colour that Odell had his Aston Martin painted in. With that change, the red tail lights were now no longer filled in. There were also some issued in a flat red. Now this is quite a valuable model and quite rare. However, with the corrosion to the front wing, its value is very low, especially teamed with a patchy paint job. So, after dismantling the casting and threading the post for the screw, here are the component parts, it is now time to strip what's left of the paint. The DB24 replaced Aston Martin's DB2 in 1953. During its four year production run, 764 were made. It came in a variety of body styles, either a 2 plus 2 hatchback, 2 seat drop head or a 2 seat fixed head, all of which looked distinctly different. It featured 2.6 and later 2.9 litre inline 6 Lagonda engines. Its successor in 1957 was the DB Mark III, which featured in Ian Fleming's novel Goldfinger, driven by James Bond. This in turn was the precursor to the famous DB5 that starred in the film adaption five years on from the book's release in 1959. Aston Martin, of course, are a famed automaker from the UK, established in 1913 by Lionel Martin and Robert Bamford. Predominantly, the pair built competition cars during the interwar years. David Brown acquired Aston Martin in 1947 and began developing luxury Grand Tourers in the DB series from 1950. Here I've applied primer to the polished body to see how well the corroded parts have filled, knowing full well that I'll probably have to strip it back and work on it some more. Sure enough, there are visible dimples in the front wing that would not likely be disguised by a couple of layers of paint. So I opt to sand the casting back down to the bare metal. Then I use some model filler to plug those gaps, applying it liberally across the wing. Fortunately, the corrosion hadn't affected any detailed areas of the casting which may have made it difficult to restore to a good degree of quality. I'm just layering it up here and will apply a couple more times once it has dried on. It shouldn't take long though. In the meantime, I attend to the wheels by washing them. The axles have the rust sanded away. And the wheels are revitalized with Citadel. Now the filler has dried, I can once again sand away to get a smooth finish. Aston Martin changed hands on a number of occasions throughout the 70s, 80s into the 90s when the company was acquired by Ford. After Ford's takeover, the company received a much greater level of investment, producing their then most successful DB model, the DB7 in 1994. In 2003, the company opened its first purpose-built factory in their history at Gaydon, a village in Warwickshire, England. Now I'm much happier with the result after sanding down the body, so I apply some thicker primer, not the fine primer that is, to that front wing and begin to apply the paint. This is Tamiya TS95 Pure Metallic Red. Perhaps not as deep a shade as the original, but you can compare at the end of the video. It does dry much darker than this though, I might add. But I have to say, I'm very pleased with how the front wing has repaired. 
There are no noticeable marks left from the filler or the primer. The base has received a coat of black gloss, then I can chrome up the ends of the axles using my chrome paint pen. Using that same pen, I can now fill in the detail of the front bumper, headlights, grille and rear bumper. A consortium headed by ProDrive founder and chairman David Richards bought Aston Martin from Ford in 2007. He left Aston Martin in 2013 after the economic downturn and a slump in sales, but the company once again began to turn a profit in 2017. The company was floated on the London Stock Exchange in 2018. I have to say, and I know I say this a lot with each passing video, that this restoration has quickly become one of my favourites. Initially I thought the casting was a bit dull and lacking. It could really benefit from a plastic um, interior and a windscreen, and maybe the wire wheels found on the Ferrari Berlinetta or the E-Type Jaguar. Despite this, once the details are picked out and become clear, it really transforms into something beautiful. The grille in particular is so imposing. It was a successful casting for Lesney, but it was discontinued in 1963 in favour of the brilliant but flawed model of the Mercedes 220SE. So now I can begin my reassembly. All I have to do is plop the body onto the base and that's it. Two screws for fitting, one front and one rear, and that is that for this restoration. So let's remind ourselves where we started at the beginning of this restoration. A badly mistreated Aston Martin, suffering blistered paint and corroded metalwork on that front wing. It took a bit of filler and a lot of sanding to sort that out, but I hope the results speak for themselves. Keep an eye on that front wing and see what you think. So here is what she looks like now. The DB24 has received a fresh, glossy and slightly more vivid coat of metallic red. That front right wing has been smoothed out and is looking as good as new. No evidence of that pimpled, rutted surface that lies beneath. The chrome work has been revitalised and the tyres have been cleaned up and washed with Citadel. This has rapidly jumped from a casting I was indifferent about to one that I now absolutely adore. I think I've given the model a few more years instead of being left to rot away. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Check out my Patreon for a preview of next week's efforts, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.